Josh. I sent you a video the other day. Oh. I thought we were friends. I did. Well, look, dude. You know, friends rag on each other. And so when I get. This wasn't a rag. This was a hazing. <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, but some people actually believe what's in the video. I sent Josh an hour and a half lecture of, of Jacob D. Wolf, um, who is a PhD in economics, who is also a, a very, very ardent and staunch um, communist. Or, or I think Marxist. And it was incredible. And I wish I could just like magically impart knowledge of the video onto all three of you listening. Hey, you know, actually, if there's three of you listening, that, that beats out Pierce Morgan. So we're good on that one. Oh, next one. Okay. But he is, he is the king, as far as I'm concerned right now, with my very limited experience of of uh, people who have PhD in economics but don't know how to use them, in my knowledge of those people, he is the king of using really poor logic. And and one of the things, that, what, Josh, what was the first? What was the first offense? Do you remember? Because like the first, the first twenty minutes of what he said, like I was like, you know, I can I can tell he's he's gearing up for something, but I agree mostly with what he's saying, like. Like, uh, you know, what the foundations of trade is and stuff. You know, what was, what was interesting to me is he paints this really nice picture of, like, you know, originally with, like, Thanksgiving and harvest time, people would just come together and just pool all their resources. But if you have a trade system that everyone's trying to get, like, like you know, in any trade, a person's trying to, like, give out the least amount of stuff while getting the most stuff back. As if that wouldn't happen at a harvest. I wonder if he or like hears if everyone like if in. if everyone like got together to decide how to pull the resources you, like as if as if there's no one there who's going to go you know what I'm going to try to make sure that I get the most resources I mean it's not like we have an example of it happening in government right now where 200 some people called the senate get together and decide how to divvy up resources it's not like each one's trying to put in like pork and and uh, little side notes and, and stuff into the bills to make sure that their state gets extra stuff so they can ensure their re-election. That would never happen, Josh, because under communism, when, when a group of people come together to decide something, they all play fair. I'll admit, I was willing to give him points for his first you know, bits. Like, in the past, collectivism was the order of the day. And the fact is, he's correct. No, he's absolutely correct. What I don't see is why we're using that as the standard, as the goal, because human history has been that of poverty and disease and war and intense loathing of other. It's not just hatred. I mean, hatred exists, just it's one of our default settings on the, the human being. But Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say that. No, it, it honestly is. You know, given the proper stimuli, hate is a very natural. Oh yeah, okay, not force. natural, but but I thought you were saying like like you know, hi, I meet you. I'm gonna hate you until you prove me otherwise, or you give me a reason not to. Yeah, no, not nothing like that. Okay, but uh, I was willing to say, yeah, he's right. We were collectives for a while, and how well did that work for us? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm recording this podcast on my computer that I hand built myself. I'm talking to another guy talking on a laptop. I mean, I guess we could go back to uh, sharing our corn crops and worrying about our child surviving malaria through the winter. Yeah, and uh, let me tell you, the grass skirt is itchy. See, you know what the the problem I've always had though with communism, and and this is the the biggest one is is he paints this idea of. You know, like, oh, you know, how will we get rid of, you know, basically it's the middleman, the, the manager. Because that's what he's really saying is let's get middle, rid of the middleman. Because he makes money and doesn't appear to do anything. You know, so like the middleman would be, he's, he is the middleman because basically any business is a transfer of, what occurs in a business is a transfer between the customer of money. And then the, the business gives up some kind of product or service. There's a transfer there. And the managers are kind of just... The, the overarching provide the overarching structure and hierarchy and you know do organization and make managerial decisions well it, I guess middleman is like half is half applicable 
it takes someone to know less than nothing to accept the argument that because you are not doing the job we are focusing upon, you must not work. Now, here's here's the problem I have is is this kind of double standard, and and I see this made by communists, especially with like the the Facebook posts all the time, and it's like this idea that that. You know, once you finish stealing all the money from the masses, they won't have any money from which to buy products from you. And that's why capitalism fails. Of course, if it really, if you think, you know, if, if someone is smart enough to get into this, <coughs> excuse me, privileged, this privileged place where you're stealing all the money, you think someone that smart would also be smart enough to go, huh, if I change this up a little bit, I can keep stealing from them continually forever. But apparently, apparently they're smart enough to get into these positions, but so stupid that, that they'll crash the whole system. I think one of the things is if uh, you get into a position where you get rich off of stealing people, and apparently you're evil enough to steal from people until they have nothing left, but you are not evil enough to cut down all the forests until we have nothing left, as we have more trees now than we did when America was founded. Apparently we're... Smart enough to realize you can't cut down trees forever, you have to keep growing them, but apparently we're not smart enough to realize you can't continually rip people off without there being anything left. Mind oh, you, yeah. there have been people in the past who were like this. Now, here, here's the thing that really boggles me, is he says, you know, like, oh, why don't we just, you know, he, he paints this idea of a business where, like, you know, six days a week, all the workers come in and work normally, and then on the seventh day of the week, half the workers work and the other half come all together and as a sort of commune, um, you know, everyone deciding together, make up their minds about like what what direction the business is going to go. Basically, making all the managerial decisions that would have otherwise been made by, you know, the the shift manager, the assistant manager, the general manager, etc. and etc. All the way up the chain. I would like to point out: can, Has anyone else not realized this? If it was actually more efficient and cheaper for that to happen. That businesses would already follow that model. Am I the and only one who? It. <laughs> Seriously, if I was if I was running like Sears and I realized that I could if I that 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 was just as efficient, I would do that in a heartbeat. I would. The reason why they haven't uh, tried that is actually unions, and I know that sounds like a cliche response, but hear me out. Back in the old days, it was kind of expected, even if you weren't on the clock, even if you weren't getting paid. If you saw something that needed to be done, it's just kind of your duty. You just do it. Okay. But then once unions started coming around and it incentivized people to get paid for not working and it incentivized people to not work if there wasn't a direct financial benefit for doing so. In fact, you can get in a lot of trouble for doing work off the clock, as I discovered. You can get in a lot of trouble. Wait, what does that have to do with, with unions, though? Well, think about it. If people were willing to just organize and say, instead of, we're not going to worry about the money right now. We're just going to focus upon what would be you know, the best for this business. Ironically, they've been trained by unions to think the exact opposite. I will you know, get paid regardless of any work I actually do. And so businesses basically look at you know, the people trying to pry their way into their business and saying, these people are, want to get paid to do nothing. How can we expect them to do work where they won't necessarily be directly financially compensated? I hear your words, but as a greedy, selfish capitalist, I cannot condone anything you say, and I think my explanation is better. <laughs> I'm so sorry. You're fired. We will see. I see it's happening. You see, this isn't my model that I came up with in my head while stroking my beard one day or something. Oh, but it is a glorious the couch, beard. Uh, regretting eating the Taco Bell. Uh, oh, yeah. Rub it in. Why don't you? Oh, I am going to have so much fun with this. But you see, I watch this happen. Doing work just for the sake of doing you know, a good work is being punished and – Getting paid for lack of work is being incentivized. Yeah, you know, I will. I will point out that 
the whole point of like you know having half the workers as as this is actually rate you know um wolf's suggestion is on the seventh day half the workers come in and work and the other half get together and make decisions he somehow doesn't get the fact that that people in that group in that in that little tiny democracy are also going to try to manipulate stuff to get everything so that like them they themselves and they and their like their department are going to get like all the all the you know extras and specials while everyone else gets screwed isn't that just artificial class warfare you know even if it's only temporary you essentially <clears throat> divide people up for a day and have this half the people get to make the decisions and these half the people have to work for the half of the people making the decisions and capitalism is, is because it divides people up as half the people do you work, have a point there sir decisions. how about how about this one though for for size if i'm running a business i pick my managers based on their effectiveness which means that by by nature you know the managers are generally if i'm a good if i'm a good business owner the managers are going to be good at managing they're going to be good at making business decisions now contrast that with with you know the whole this whole thing about democracy like let's say you let's like take a walmart let's say that the whole communist um, you know communist system is applied to walmart well most of the stuff that people there are people who spend their lives or a portion of their lives stocking shelves and baking and putting out produce and cleaning up aisles. <clears throat> How many of them do you think are are going to be on the same business knowledgeable level as somebody that I, as an owner of a business, would myself hire for that specific purpose? There, there's no comparison. Are you knocking guys who stock shelves? Jerk. Jerk. I used to be one of those guys. Shove it. I am one of those guys. You are one of those guys. My point is, is that there is a, there's no way, especially if they're going to average out, there is no way that, that the average of a whole bunch of people whose job is to do everything except manage are going to be as skilled at managing a business as someone who's hired for that specific purpose. There's you are actually a pretty asking, good way of determining you whether are, or not they'd be good at it. <laughs> Yeah, because the the the, build, the whole the whole business is going to go crashing into the ground. Or or the alternative, if you are a stock boy but you're good at managing, then the manager gives you additional responsibilities until you become the manager. Right, but see, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen under under a communism thing because because one, there is no manager spot for you to get into. So basically, it's your voice one amongst you know ten, twenty, fifty, a hundred people, and you have to convince everyone else that your method alone is gonna do you know be the best way for the whole company to go not to mention that groupthink is really bad like like there have been studies done and the least I creativity with occurs you. with group <laughs> you agree oh thank you fuck <laughs> screw you dude <laughs> i'm thinking this by my own and you're just sitting here welcome to the echo chamber group, group oh Okay, that no, that's that's entirely relevant. You suck. Uh, no, but but it's true. Groupthink is terrible. Like like, creativity is highest when people are on their own. And and this is the exact opposite. You are guaranteeing mediocrity by following this communistic level, this communistic idea. You are guaranteeing that the company will not do well. You are guaranteeing that people are going to bicker and fight just as much, if not even more, because at least. At least, at least, when there's a manager, everyone can hate this common person and work together. But if if the decisions are made by the whole group, then who are you going to be mad at? Everyone else. And this is me being a little bit, dem little demagogic, but my overall point still stands. It's a terrible idea from a logistics standpoint, from a practicality standpoint, from a humor, you know, behavioral psychology standpoint. It does not work. It is kind of funny that uh, he uses the example of Thanksgiving people coming together. People don't remember the year before the first Thanksgiving. Uh huh. Do you remember what happened? To, for those who don't know the story, you see, when folks first came to the New World, they had this grand idea that they had just escaped, you know, the oppression of England. You know, basically felt that they were neglected, left alone. Except when it came to religion and finance. And, but for some reason, they didn't think of that. And they said, we're going to go to the new world to be left alone. So let's all 
you know, collectivize and we'll all share the land. We'll all grow the crops together. We'll all share everything. Okay. And a month went by. Two months. I'm not sure where this is going. Young folks who were working in the fields looked up and realized, hey, it doesn't matter how much bra- backbreaking work I do, I'm going to get paid just as much as the old guy over there who can barely you know, lift a tool. Why am I sitting out here doing all this work to pay for the rest of these guys? I'm out. And so one by one, the younger generation stopped working in the field, stopped tending to crops. There was massive starvation because everybody realized, hey, I'm going to get the exact same amount if I do nothing as if I do something. And so the colony almost died out because no one wanted to do anything. A lot of people will tell the story that the first Thanksgiving was to thank the Indians for teaching us how to grow crops because we would starve because you know we just don't know how to you know talk to land how to give it a little you know shoulder massage and you know right. get, to help get the crops going that's not actually what happened what ended up happening was people were dying and so what uh, William Bradford ended up doing is he said all right look here's what we'll do we're going to divide up the land and you all get your own piece of the land you whatever you produce on it it's yours do with it what you want and whatever you don't produce on it if you decide not to work on it well a certain phrase was used later to describe if you do not work you do not eat Mm -hmm. within one year of trying this new idea they had enough food that they could actually start exporting food to the local Indian tribes who were amazed that you know these pale faces who they were convinced were going to die out within a few months were suddenly producing so much food that they were actually reaping the benefits. And so they were invited over because they're like, Hey, wow, guys, congratulations. Good job. We didn't think you could do it, but good on you. And so it was basically a celebration, thanking God for abandoning socialism. That is a, that is a wonderful Thanksgiving. Can you read that to me when I go to bed? (laughs) I will hug my teddy bear with that has like like a, a wad of cash that's sewn into its paw. You filthy corporate you know, teddy bear that you hug at night. I know. I had to I had to crush three underlings underneath my boot to afford it. It was expen it's made of gold. No, actually if uh, you outsource it to China you can get uh, 20 Chinese crushed underlings for the price of three crushed. Oh underlings. dang. Dang. I might have to try that. <laughs> I'll hook up with Romney. We'll do it later. (laughs) Uh, Romney, get the binder. (laughs) (laughs) Chinese women in there. I didn't know there was Chinese women in there too. I thought he was racist. He was only he was only doing it for white women. Uh, How do you fit him in the binder anyway? Well, you know how they. You know how you preserve leaves, right? It works the same thing for women. I, I thought. Oh well, you know, you buy them at the store. Make sure they're fresh. You know, kind of only like in Nevada, tomato, though. You, could... you only buy only those kind of purchases are made in Nevada. Now, you you got to poke the sides a little bit to make sure it's fresh. This is this is getting really inappropriate. I'm gonna just yeah, I don't like talking up. about binders either. It's insensitive and sexist. I know. And Josh is from it. Well, I'm not going to say where you're from. He's from a place he knows about these things. It's a Jersey thing. That's a Jersey thing. Watch someone in Jersey, New Jersey, going to sue you for this. It's New Jersey defamation. That's like saying hello. Snooky will be the main defendant. <laughs> <laughs> actually, wasn't it? Wasn't it like originally one of the things I heard about Jersey Shore is apparently that most of the people were actually from New York. That doesn't surprise me because Jersey Shore, it's basically. I don't know, maybe it's kind of like Jersey High School if everyone is suddenly just given multiple millions of dollars. But otherwise, nothing about it really strikes me as New Jersey. It's basically like California culture just dropped into New Jersey with New York-ish accents, though some of them were kind of forced. Okay. That makes sense. 
I don't guess. know I don't anyone know. in this state who actually takes that show seriously. I think it must be it's kind of like french fries. They're not really french. But for some reason, you know they're bad. It's bad for you, but uh just feels right sometimes. <laughs> After, especially after you're finished watching Piers Morgan. Now, how dare you? Oh, you know it. You know this is how we roll. Okay, so... Actually, there's one thing I wanted to, to, to also piss off about with, with, the whole, with the whole communism thing. How do you start a business under communism? Uh, no, uh, hold on, hold on. Hold on. That's actually... This a is a logical impossibility. This is a this is a legitimate. No, I agree. It is. Tell me why. Well, you see, one thing I've learned from Marxist communists, especially, is they are very jealous of other collectives. If you are, say, if we're free market capitalists, you know, endorse. We're like, hey, you know what? I've got a great idea. If you guys want to start your own collective, go right ahead. You'll try your thing. We'll try. It. It's the federalist idea. Everyone can try their own little experiment, and whichever one works, fantastic. Yeah, that was the original point of the states. Like each one was supposed to be its own experiment in democracy. And no such thing with communism. They will tell you time and time again, communism cannot exist in the presence of capitalism because capitalism, in their mind, always attacks communism. In reality, it's just communism cannot produce nearly to the left as capitalists do. And so they will always tell you that communism will only work when it is totally free from the influence of capitalism. How will that work? You must remove all other collectives. The only way the collective survives is if you destroy all others. That's why union workers in this country don't much care about the workers in China. They're not part of our collective. Doesn't matter. And so a business, if you really get down to it, is an economic, in their minds, it's an economic collective. And so you would be starting a rival collective. Communism cannot work Unless there's only one collective. Even then, it doesn't work. But don't tell the communists that. It'll hurt their feelings. Oh, dang. But that's why it's a little ironic that the communists are such big union supporters. It's because like, It's like an economic jihad. Kind of. Basically, they know how to destroy economies. But once they have their collective, the collective is stagnation. That's a fact. So starting a business... It's a logical impossibility. A single unopposed collective cannot have little mini collectives rising up. And communism is the single unopposed collective. Let me let me ex- well let me give you my reasoning behind it, and you can tell me what you think. See, under capitalism, if you want to start a business, um, most small businesses start out with people using their own their own property, and usually also uh, taking out loans. So I have a I have a decently nice computer. Um, if I wanted to start up my own computer, my own like a uh, computer company, uh, repairing computers, troubleshooting stuff, I would end up using a lot of my own tools and stuff repairing that. It would probably be like a one man company. Maybe if I got enough people, uh, enough customers, I could hire someone else to to you know help me. But according to communism. If I hire a person, it doesn't matter if he works as many hours as me. I could be working 20 hours a week. Or, not a week. <laughs> 20 hours a day. 20 hours a day. <laughs> as, soon as, as soon as I have someone working with me, he has a say in what I do with my tools and my computer and my service that I give. Which I and- think is stupid. If, if his sole job is to like deliver the computers back and forth between me and the customers. I think the only say he should get is negotiating with me, you know, how he wants to do that part. That's it. But like like he can come to me and say, you know what, I would really prefer instead of delivering computers from like eight o'clock in the morning until until noon, I would really prefer to do it from ten o'clock until two or or from nine till one. That I would that would be legitimate. 
for him to come up and say to me, you know what, I've been noticing you've been using a number five screwdriver, I think you should do a number six. My response to that is, you're fired, because I know what I'm doing. I, you're, you're here to drive. That's it. You don't get a choice in, like, what I do, and, and that's, that's that. But according to communism, as soon as, as, soon as I hire someone, all, not only does, does anyone else I hire get a say in what I do and how the business is run, my stuff is also all forfeit. Any property of mine that I previously owned all of a sudden becomes a property of this collective. I cannot think of a single proposition that will more destroy the incentive of any person ever to form a business. How about the destruction of private property before you even think about starting business? Let me tell you, that one would be pretty bad. That would be pretty bad. Besides that, what, what are you supposed to do? Like, 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 say to all your friends... Hello, comrades. I would like to start a business. How? Like, where would you get the capital from? First off, as I understand, it, a lot of communists are against banks and banking systems. So you can't get a loan. Where are you gonna get? Are you gonna like convince like all your friends to to pull together resources? Have you ever tried to do that? Like, people yes, are willing to spend time. You're not gonna get everyone to donate like a thousand dollars till you have like fifty thousand dollars to go and renovate a building and get a business started. Businesses start from like one or two and, and sometimes a small group of individuals who risk their own money and their own livelihood and spend up to hundreds of hours, you know, like a hundred hours a week working, you know, that's like a, what is it, a 20 hour day? That's up there. It's between 16 and 20 hour days. Yeah, ish. Yeah. Working on this. I've talked with small business owners. Like I've had conversations with them and they say like, I don't stop working. There is not one point, even when I'm asleep. I will get calls that I have to attend to. If I'm working in Walmart, I don't have to deal with that. Once I clock out, I'm done. That's the difference between a small business owner and, and someone who's just working. But these communists have the gall to say that because I'm working for you, your everything that you've poured into this business is forfeit. You lose control over your own property and over your own decision making. Because the workers are the ones really generating the wealth. You're just leeching off of their labor. Right. It's not like they're using your equipment or that you're buying the ingredients. Yeah, it's not like their 20-hour work week compares to your 100-hour work week. Yeah, he made this, this like argument like, like, you know, someone pays you to come in and take some materials and make something new, and you're not allowed to keep that item or whatever it is you made. Well, well if I'm you sorry. want your paycheck, if yeah, you don't I want mean, paycheck... <laughs> Like seriously, like you could okay, you could even break up the transaction like this. You come in to work. The guy gives you the items. He then you do then do whatever you do with it. He buys it back. End of transaction. Alternatively, another way of looking at it is is according to his argument, this is this is a, a argument by disproof. Consider if I hire someone to go in and clean my room. I give them basically they come in, there's all this raw resources, there's a computer that I'm working at, there's you know, uh, stuff on the floor, they're given resources, they make something new out of it, they make a clean room. Do they get my room since I hired them to clean my room? I know this is pedantic, but this is what he's suggesting. That's simply because someone hires you to do something that you suddenly deserve all the stuff that you were working with. No. It gets really weird when... Because remember, this is collectivism, not individualism. And so at work, I'm often you know, told, hey, a customer just uh, paid to have this chair built. You know, could you go assemble the chair? And so my work takes an unassembled chair and makes it an assembled chair. And so step one is I now have a right to the chair because my labor produced the wealth that is the assembled chair. And so I have a right to it, but I am part of the collective of Staples. And so now you bought the chair from us and bought it, you know, said, hey, I'm going to pay a little extra, have it assembled. But now Staples still owns it. And so you just gave us some of your money, sucker. Because the collective still owns it. 
Yes, I guess. I don't know. They, it's weird. They, they plan on getting rid of money in communism and replacing it with work waivers, which doesn't make sense to me because money is a work waiver. That's it's what it is. Evil, greedy corporate work waiver. <laughs> but it's not. Oh. <laughs> like, like whatever they used to produce and print out the work waivers in a I, communist I thing won't be that as well. I support unicorn horn work waivers. I mean, this is the unicorn. No, 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 no. Already, no so. Listen, listen. That is discriminatory against against unicorns, and they will quickly become an endangered species if you try making them out of unicorn horns. About that. Oh, so that's what that's what happened in the beginning of U.S. colonial history, and that's why we don't. Ha- oh, that's why we don't have any. That was happening in the time of Noah. Dude. This is why Noah. we can't have nice things. You know, they said the Earth, you know, was so wicked that God had to destroy it. They were using unicorn horn waivers. That's why God wiped them out, oh, and it. that's why he had the rainbow at the end to signify that he'd never have to do it again. Because that was the, the escape route for. Avenged. That was the escape route for all the unicorns. That rainbow. For all them to ascend into heaven and escape evil mankind. So intense. Intense. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, pay. Money that we get is what? It's a representative of value that we use to trade for goods and services. The value that we get paid, the, the money that we get paid, is representative of the value of our work. So to use the term work, a work waiver or, or a work, something to represent the, you know, the communist term work waiver or, or whatever you say to represent the value of your work, that's money. It's, it's money with another name. It's money. It's a representative of value. But they want to they wanna pretend it's different. I don't know why. It's the same thing. I think I know why uh, their economic model is messed up. And uh, Wolf makes the same exact problem. They are trying to create a world based on a needs-based economy, which is impossible. Well, you know, honestly, here's the problem with that. The word need is a really screwed up word. What defines a need? Who needs what? Who need? well, who needs what, but what is a need? Like, like, if you want something hard enough that you become psychologically damaged, is that a need? Does that, is that a psychological need? Or a physiological need? For me, need what the the word need is really synonymous with require in order for something to happen. So, you know, I don't like like on a on an objective like moral fixture of the universe scale, I don't need food or water. I simply require it in order to continue living and breathing. I don't need a video game system. I simply require one to be able to play video games. I don't need a banana smoothie. I just require one in order to have a banana peel to throw at a comedian. That's hateful. You should throw the tampons instead. No, that's that's reserved for congressmen. Used and don't forget it it's gotta be used. You know, maybe steeped in a little urine, you know, just to give it that little zest. No, that's in the jars, bro. Uh, why didn't they just combine the two? I mean, let me tell you, that would have looked like uh a science project gone wrong, and that probably would have had a better psychological effect. Seriously, do we have to teach you know terror tactics to these terrorists? I mean, hey, they were original enough to come up with with multiple jars of urine and feces, so I guess they that was to, I wouldn't have thought of that. That that level of originality was beyond me. I would have gone in there and expressed my free opinion, but apparently, you got to throw jars of feces That's to so get mainstream. choice for women. <laughs> So mainstream. So, so t-shirts oh, with blood so on them. Yeah. Fake blood. But you see, I actually have a theory. You know, going back to the economy. I have a theory as to what the economy actually is. Because needs-based, the reason why so many economies in the past fail... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me, before, let me cut you off and, and let me go tell you where I was going with that. The, what, my basic point is that need, a needs-based economy is basically bullcrap. When you say needs-based economy, what it actually becomes is a wants-based economy. Because people will – because remember, needs – when you say you need something, what you're really saying is in order for X to happen, I require this. And once you, once you acknowledge that, then it, the question becomes is what do you want to do by which you require these things? 
And want is a much more definable term than need. Want is based on desire. Want is based on the value you give other things. I know what I want. I don't know what I need. Whatever, in this case, need means. Physiological needs, mental needs, any other kind of needs, spiritual needs, blah, 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 blah. I do know what I want. Economies are based off of want, not need. Okay. I'm going to be a jerk and tell you that's half true. Well, you can suck my... Continue. You have a continue? Dick. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a continuum. I have a continuum. Oh. It's kind of like a Mobius strip. Corporate continuum. It's so mainstream. Continue with what you were saying. <laughs> so bad. This is retarded. <laughs> continue. Go. What were you saying? You see, you're talking about the desire based economy. And. For a while, that will work. But you see, the best way to understand the economy is to do the desire with respect to the gratitude-based economy. Because desire, what do you want? The market can determine, oh, this person wants this and is willing to give this many sticks away to get that many stones. Okay, we can measure that. I love how you use an, an analogy of insulting people. Oh, that's actually nice.